What's going on guys? Matty Wichlinski here at The Strength Shop. I just got a question from a young male athlete, 20-ish years old, wants to be a wrestler, and he asked me, what's a good healthy food to snack on in between meals when I'm not really hungry, but I gotta get some energy in? I'm currently having some peanut butter and celery, but I want other options. What can I do? First of all, if you're a rabbit, that's a decent snack, but celery has about as you know much calories or energy as a sip of water and uh, this shirt, okay? So there's not much substance going on there, but it does give you something to chew on. It's a good diet food, but it's not a good energy source. Peanut butter is a good energy source. Uh, different nut butters uh, would be good as well. But something to think about is getting an overall good nutritional plan intact first. Um, of course, you can just add snacks and all that. I don't have some kind of presentation ready. I'm just going to ramble a little bit. Um, so something to think about here, it would be good for most people to make a list of what the best kinds of proteins are. I got, I got protein, I got carbs, and I got fat, right? So make a list, just Google it. Google, what are the best protein sources? Look at different articles. See what the trends are in all the different articles. Do some independent research. You're going to find you know, the best protein. First of all, I believe protein moves around, carbs grow on the ground. Yes, there are, there is protein found in you know, carbohydrate sources like vegans, you know, in beans and stuff like that. But for you to get something, a serving of beans, you're going to get something, uh, seven or eight grams of protein, but you're going to get, I don't know, maybe 30-ish grams of carbs. So what if you're not trying to get that many carbs? So to get eight grams of protein in beans, you got to get 30 grams of carbs. So yes, there's, there's protein in it. But the way I look at it and the way I teach it, protein moves around, carbs grow on the ground. So if I'm looking at, and I'm asking the Googles, I'm asking the interwebs, do some independent research. What are the best sources of protein? You're gonna find things like eggs, chicken, beef, fish, turkey, shrimp, crab. The list goes on. There's, I don't wanna say it's endless, but there's a lot of stuff there. Buffalo, find the best sources. And I'm not just saying the best low fat source, or, or you start with all sources, all sources, and then slowly start chopping away things that you don't like, things that maybe don't fit your budget. Not everyone can go out and buy lobster. We can't all have caviar for our um, uh, protein sources. So you got to try your best to consume the best sources available to you. The best sources in your area, available at the store, available at the local farmer's market, um, and what's available in your budget. If you're on a ramen noodle and rice and bean kind of budget, you know, I, I've been there. I'm, hell, I'm there right now. Um, First, I guess I should say I am not a registered dietitian. I am not a certified nutritionist. So if, if that right there throws you off, turn this off. You know, you could, you could say everything I, I say is shit and I don't care. But this is just what I've done and learned over the years um, of, of just being an athlete and a, and a strength coach, personal trainer and all that stuff. Done my own research and taking some courses in college. Moving on from that idea. So get, list all your proteins, then list all your carbohydrate sources. You're gonna have different potatoes. And I don't care if it's sweet potato or, or white potato, peop, uh, white rice, brown rice, this or that, blah, blah, blah. The difference in those things is so minuscule, it's so small, that most people don't need to worry about it at all. The carbohydrate sources are almost the same. The, the, the difference is just so small that most people don't need to worry about it. If you're going from eating tacos and hoagies, pizza and ice cream every day, it doesn't matter if you switch from that stuff to slowly go in the, in the other direction to eating you know, rice instead of pizza, right? I, not that pizza's bad or any of those things are bad, but it's just so easy to overconsume too many calories in those comfort foods, mashed potatoes, lots of butter, gravy, all those things are good. Too much is not too good. Everyone, we're trying to find the perfect, uh, not the perfect, the best qualities first, and then we'll find the right quantities. You can do it the other way around. What are the best quantities? Okay, ice cream's not bad, but if you eat too much of it. So we're trying to find the balance between quality and quantity. List all the fats you can. I guess go back to carbs, your different potatoes, your rice, your pasta and bread. I know there's a low carb diets is all the rage now. It was low fat diets, all these things. But all these things come back to the idea of eliminating something. When you eliminate something, you're getting your calories down. So we're not just trying to eliminate a food source or an entire food group or macronutrient. We're trying to find the right balance, okay? The right balance for each individual. Um, 
and, and that way you can customize what you need. I'm obviously going on a long rant here when we're talking about a healthy snack, but when you find when you educate yourself a little bit, you'll be able to know everything instead of me just saying, "Hey, you know, I have a turkey sandwich with cheese." You know, that, that's that's fine. Um, this or that. When you educate yourself and learn about these things, then you can make your own ed educated, uh, you know, estimates. Pasta and bread might be great for one person, might be terrible for another. If you truly have like a gluten issue, it's bad. Most people don't. They just, you know. Kind of make it up but if the only way to really know is if obviously if something gives you an, an obvious pain um, then you might have a sensitivity or an allergy you want to avoid foods that are giving you chronic inflammation that's a really bad thing chronic inflammation but most people just kind of make it up I believe I could be wrong there but the only way to know I guess for sure would be to get your blood work done and see you know what issues you are oatmeal is a great fruit and juice is fine I know juice is high in sugar some people might need more sugar at certain times. If, if you, you, know, you train really hard during your workout or right after your workout, a cup or two of juice is a great idea. But to start your day loading up on a bunch of juice, sugar, when you're not doing anything else, probably not so much. So the times that you're doing things are going to matter. Um, I don't think anything is bad. Like I said, I just think there's better options for certain people at certain times. So it's, it's all situational. Everything depends. All kinds of vegetables, beans, and then fill in the blank with anything else. Google it. Look up food composition table. Google that, and you'll find all kinds of different information. Look at different tables, and you can, you, you can see how much nutrition is in different foods. It's all out there. You just have to be willing to search, okay? Different fats. What are the best kinds of fats? Avocados, coconut, nuts, seeds, olives, different oils. We know that some oils are really good, some are really bad. Avoid your hydrogenated oils. Um, like uh, olive oil is good, but then if you cook with olive oil, maybe it's not so good. It's better to cook with palm oil or coconut oil or, or butter. Certain foods are better at certain temperatures. It's confusing, I know. That's why people go to school for years to figure this out. And then, and then people want to get the perfect information in like a one minute YouTube clip or something like that or Instagram clip. You're not going to get it. People go to school for years to become registered dietitians and you want all the information just like that. It's not going to happen. You've got to educate yourself a little bit. Find out the best fat sources. So this is kind of what I look at as my hierarchy of, of what I think is most important for most people most of the time. Number one thing you got to worry about is overall calories. Calories in, calories out. It's not the only thing. Some people say screw calories, doesn't matter. Just eat good healthy foods. I think if you eat too much of the healthiest food in the world, you can still get fat. If you only eat a little bit of, you know, not so good foods, your, your ice cream, your sugars, different things like that, it's still not bad. Overall calories, boom. Next, where are you getting your calories from? The macronutrients, your protein, your carbs, and your fats. How much of each one to give you your balance? I, I look at it as like a budget. So my overall calories, let's say I'm a 200 pound athlete, somewhere around that 300, uh, I'm sorry, 3,000 calories. That gives me around 14, 15 calories per pound per day for maintenance when I'm training hard as a, as a 200 pound male athlete. Female athletes are gonna need a little bit less. They might need around 13 calories per pound. Um, and then after that, I get my macros. How much of my protein? How much of my carbs? How much of my fat? Um, so you, you can do that. Uh, pretty common, most people are gonna say, start with one gram of protein per pound per day. How much fat are you going to need? Some people might say 0.25 grams. I would say something more like 0.4 grams per pound per day. Do the math there. Um, times it by the, the amount of calories per gram. There's 4 calories per gram in, car, in uh, protein and carbs. There's 9 calories per gram in fat. So when you do that math and you, and you work out your budget, now you know how much you have left for your, your carbohydrate. And we're trying to find a decent balance here of your macronutrients. The macronutrients, next there's going to be micronutrients. The micronutrients are essentially the nutritional value, the vitamins and minerals that make up all these foods, okay? You, you know some people that go on short-term diets to really lean out for a show or something like that, or they just want to lose weight, so they find themselves eating the same food over and over and over again. Chicken and broccoli, the most common you know, diet ever. Nothing wrong with chicken and broccoli, but if you're eating the same foods day in, day out, consistently over time, you might end up getting some uh, allergic reactions over time. You might develop something because of the overuse of certain micronutrients and under, uh, undertaking other things, okay? So we need a good balance. Having a, a huge variety. I was taught a long time ago, try and eat 17 colors a day. 
I didn't understand it at first, but if you think about it, kiwi, blueberries, raspberries, bananas, um, chicken, dark meat, light meat, you know, they, they all have different nutritional values. So the more variety you have, the overall health you can have, but it's really hard to gauge the quantity when you're eating so many different foods. So that's why for a lot of bodybuilders, they'll eat the same thing, white fish, tilapia, and asparagus, right? That's easy. If I'm eating the same thing, I can just eat a little bit more or I can eat a little bit less, and it's easy to quantify the calories, but it's not going to be the healthiest long-term solution. Those kind of diets are not sustainable. A short-term diet, I get it. If I, was going to, if I was up for a competition or if I'm going to get paid a shitload of money, I would do all kinds of weird stuff uh, like the Beyonce diet she she cleanses herself with you know cayenne pepper and lemon juice for like 10 days straight you lose 10 15 pounds but then after that you gain it all back so you don't want crash diets you don't want weird things we're looking for healthy sustainable things that are going to get you through your day through your life sustainable you need long term a long term plan of action not just a quick fix almost Everybody who goes to a quick fix says, so-and-so lost 10 pounds doing this. Where are they a month, two months, a year later? Okay, we're looking for sustainability, healthy, uh, healthy things first. And then, you know, all those kind of competition factors can come in later. Com the closer people get to a highly competitive state, typically the further away from health they would be. Not in all cases, but in many cases. So we're looking for health first and then, you know, getting super lean and shredded and, and all those things second. So once you got all that, man, um, I'm not going to tell you exactly how to, you know, uh, get that in. Okay, actually, let me go back to this. I'm jumping all over the place because that's what I do. You need variety to get all those micronutrients in. After that, I've got NT right here. NT is nutrient timing. That's a little bit more of an advanced technique to find out when should you get certain proteins and carbohydrates and fats. For example, um, so many people have heard don't eat carbs at night or don't eat food after 6 p.m. These are just little tricks and hacks to try and get people to eat less calories, okay? So that comes back to just getting less calories. Don't eat carbohydrates. If you don't eat carbohydrates, you're going to get less calories. Short term, you'll lose weight. Long term, it's just not a sustainable thing. I'll be damned if I'm going to cut carbohydrates out of my life forever. Uh, don't eat fat. Obviously, you're going to, at the, at the end of the day, the end result is you're going to get less calories. Short term, you'll probably lose some weight. Long term, it's just not going to work. So finding the balance, what's right for you, the nutrient timing. Um, for example, for me, carbohydrate intake goes way up uh, around my workout windows. So days that I work out, carbs are higher. Protein and fat might be a little bit higher. Days that I don't train, typically two or three days a week I don't train. Four or five days a week I do. My overall calories will be higher and my carbohydrate intake will be significantly higher around my workout window. Um, so let's say I work out at noon, between like 10 and two o'clock that window, Carbs are gonna be way up. Early in the morning, carbs will be way down. Late in the day, carbs will be way down. And I would shuttle those uh, carbs from those uh, my first meal and my last meal a day, and I would just put them in my workout window and maybe even add some more of a simple thing, such as add a bunch of juice, a cup or two of juice into my intro workout uh, drink. Um, so that's an idea, okay? And then on off days of training, my carbs would be overall a little bit lower, calories would be a little bit lower. On training days, calories a little bit higher, carbs a little bit higher around my workout window. Last thing, this little S up top. This is where most people spend their money. They think the biggest value is in the supplementation. I think the smallest value is in the supplementation. There's only a few supplements out there that really truly work. Um, and they work consistently for most people most of the time. I don't think anything outside of drugs work for everybody all the time. Um, so obviously we know drugs work. Most people aren't gonna go that route. I don't wanna go that route. So if you are convinced that supplementation is the key, you can look at almost anybody from an unbiased standpoint. If you go to any one of those stores online, there's so many people that are selling these products Right, and it's a billion dollar business, multi-billion dollar business. So that's where the marketing is. Selling milk and steak and eggs is not a multi-billion dollar business. These farmers are barely making any money raising cows. Meanwhile, you know, because they make a couple dollars off, you know, a, a, a steak. Meanwhile, it takes pennies to produce a, a, a jar of pre-workout that they sell for 30, 40, 50 bucks. What would, if you're going into business, where would you invest your money? Making pennies to sell a steak or making billions 
to sell pre-workout and all these other things that I can put a sexy body on. Sex sells, and you better believe the supplement uh, industry is based off of selling sex. The fitness industry for the most part nowadays is selling sex. Um, if you are interested in learning more, you can contact me, Matt, at TSS Athletics. I can help you customize a plan for you. What's it gonna take? And these things are based off your age, your gender, your, your current condition, your goals, all these things. We take into consideration what you need and how we can apply it to your life to get the perfect plan. There is no perfect plan to start, but there's a pretty good starting point and you get your starting point and you be consistent. You learn how to track, you learn how to do these things. And then every two to three weeks you make the adjustments so you get better. It's not about perfection, it's about progression. You get in there, you start, you get in the game, you learn as you go, you hire a coach like me or a whole bunch of other people out there. Hopefully they have your best interest in mind and not just their bank account because if the majority of their Instagram is selfies and booty shots, you should need to be smarter than that. But if they obviously have been in the game for quite a while, you know, ask around, do your own research and uh, be smart about it. Get yourself, if you're going to get educated, get yourself some books on nutrition, right? I've, this is one of, the, uh, one of the few books I've kept from college, right? Contemporary Nutrition. And I think it's funny because some of the pics in here have like chicks with like the big bangs and the curly hair and the can of rave in it. I think this book's from the 80s. But anyway, I've got tables and charts, food composition tables. All this stuff's online now. So, but any food from broccoli, I mean beef, I can, I can help learn or, or teach you how to get the right diet that's right for you. And that's based off of quality and quantity. Again, you want to contact me, Matt at TSSAthletics.com. TSS Athletics is the website. The strength shop is the gym. I'm in Longwood. If you're interested in contacting me, please do so. I look forward to hearing from you. I hope that helps a little bit and I didn't confuse you even more. Um, maybe there'll be a part two and we'll elaborate. Good talk.